Texas top oil and gas regulator. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes, those items are approved. Voting on the companies putting money in her bank account. Some of what I have seen today uh, is evidence for exactly why we need ethics reform. KXAN investigators travel to West Texas for proof of what's not being disclosed and track down the politicians. Ms. Craddock. And the powerful family in question. Mr. Craddock, we just want to ask you some questions about your oil interest. Tonight, our investigation is grabbing attention at the state capitol. We need folks who are willing to take a stand against that. The status quo is not enough here in Texas. The tax money coming from those oil companies goes into schools, highways, and disaster funding for you. So you want to trust the people making decisions on how those companies operate is in the best interest of Texans. That falls to the three-member Railroad Commission, including its chair, Christy Craddock. We first told you last night at 10 o'clock how ethics experts and even her colleagues have concerns about what we discovered about Craddock. And her family's connections to the industry. Tonight, KXAN investigator Jody Barr speaks with a state lawmaker who's ready to tackle the issue head on in the upcoming legislative session. Everywhere you look, hotels, restaurants, and gas stations are popping up as the middle of nowhere has become the epicenter of the latest Texas oil boom. Drilling oil wells happens daily. Pumping it out is nonstop. If there's oil underground, even neighborhoods are fair game. This is probably one of the more prominent neighborhoods in Denver City, and you've got a pulling unit right behind this house. Courtney Richardson planned to be a stay-at-home mom, but that changed when oil prices dropped a few years ago and her oil worker husband's pay took a hit. It's all looking up now with the discovery of the largest continuous U.S. oil field practically in her backyard, bringing with it the constant rumble of oil field trucks, the sound of 24-7 pump jacks, and even that neighborhood oil well, all welcome sounds to West Texans. For us, it, it doesn't bother us because for us, it's job security. You know, it, it makes us happy. Back at the Capitol, some lawmakers are questioning the relationships between the state's most powerful regulators and the industry they regulate. Sometimes simply the appearance of impropriety undermines the effectiveness of the regulator. Representative Rafael Enchia was part of the 2013 Sunset Commission, a legislative panel charged with making sure state agencies are working efficiently. Sunset recommended separating the three commissioners from oil and gas companies. Government watchdogs told lawmakers that nearly 70% of the railroad commissioner's campaign cash came from the oil and gas companies they regulate. And some of that cash came from the people connected to active cases, cases the commission was in the middle of deciding. Commissioner Christy Craddock told Anchia during the 2013 sunset she didn't need a law for her to do the right thing. I think the question is why should why if we are capable of self policing is who's going to why should we be treated differently than other non judicial statewide because I think we should self police and I think we're we are ethical and able to self police which is the important part of this do you believe this self policing mentality is working with this commission well, look, I was very skeptical of that argument from the Railroad Commission uh, back in 2013 when they said, yeah, you know, it j just let us guard the hen house, okay? And we don't need any rules governing that. It is in human nature uh, to uh, have the incentive, in, in their case, to make money. I get that, right? But if you're going to be engaging in these private businesses and at the same time maintaining this public charge, you owe it to uh, the public. To disclose that. To see if that was happening, we headed to West Texas, searching a dozen courthouses for railroad commissioner names in stacks of mineral rights. We found more than 600 properties in 22 counties connected to Craddock and her family's oil interests. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Those items are approved. Are approved. Those items are approved. Those items are approved. We also found more than 400 times when Craddock voted on agenda items dealing with oil companies that her financial filings show pay her and her father oil royalties directly. That's not something the Sunset Commission knew during their 2000. 13 reform efforts. 
knowing this now, what do you plan to do in 2019? I'm going to be filing bills that are, are tough on disclosure, transparency, elimination of conflicts, uh, all the things that I've been fighting for since 2013, and uh, I'm going to make sure that they uh, are brought to the forefront and get done this session. Texas law allows railroad commissioners to have oil and gas interests, but the law requires they disclose those conflicts on the record. That means they're supposed to tell the public about it during these public meetings, and they're not supposed to cast a vote. But in four years of commission minutes, we found no on-the-record disclosure. That would be breaking the law up north across the Red River. How personally involved, financially involved, can they be in the industry they regulate? Not at all. 50 years ago, Oklahoma lawmakers banned their commissioners from having any interest in or financing any company they regulate. Lawmakers there also banned commission staffers from taking anything from anyone they regulate. Right down to a cup of coffee. What is the state of Oklahoma trying to prevent? Number one, you're trying to prevent any kind of question and then telling the elected official you can't have any interest, period. I don't know how you would get any tougher than that. That's not a step the Texas legislature's shown any interest in taking. If it's good for Oklahoma, why is it not good for Texas? I, I think what Oma, Oklahoma has done is just basic good government and good governance. Uh, we should be able to adopt something like that here in Texas. The, the question is political will. We should be able to get this done in Texas, and I'm hopeful that the legislature has the political will to do it. Fellow Railroad Commissioner Ryan Sitton sat down with us for this investigation. He said the way he avoids conflicts of interest, he created a blind trust. That's where a trustee invests for him, and he does not know where that money is being invested. But he's the only one of the three railroad commissioners who has something like that. And Jody, state law says that if anyone suspects Craddock has broken the law, that they could file a complaint or a lawsuit. That's right, Sydney. And the attorney general could also file suit if there's a violation found. She could be removed from office. Representative Anchia, from your story promises he'll file a new bill next year, and we know you'll stay on top of any new developments for us. Jody, thanks so much. You're welcome. Right now, drill deeper online as we walk you through the dynasty of power and money one family has created in the oil industry. Interactive explainers to break down the numbers, a timeline to see how the family has emerged as business boomed, and a video trip to West Texas to see how this investigation came together. It's all in the investigative section of KXAN.com.